Welcome back to JSA TV, where we're covering the latest stories, trends, and innovations from leaders in the digital infrastructure industry. I'm Buffy Harakitis of JSA, and joining me today, we have two very special guests, two of my favorite people in the industry. We have Miranda Gardner. She is the executive director of the iMasons Climate Accord, and Michael Donahue, and he is the chair of the Power Working Group. Thanks so much for joining today, friends. Thanks, Buffy, for having us. Yeah. It's great to be back. Yeah, we're here in Las Vegas, uh, no better place to be for the inaugural Yota Conference. And so far, the show floor is absolutely buzzing with so much energy. And one of the key topics of this conference, and probably mostly all conferences within digital infrastructure this year is power and sustainability. Uh, so I have two of the best experts here to dive right into this topic. So let's start, Michael, as the world continues to shift towards cleaner energy, how can we assure that emissions uh, reductions happen in a way that supports just a power transition, especially when it comes to the communities and the industries that will be most affected? I think that's a fantastic question talking about the communities at large you know right we talk about the four p's um the four p's in the of the i masons the planet power uh perception and people and people <laughs> and people. They, right in the communities is, is a big piece of that and so to answer the question right is that there's a there's this enormous energy transition i i want to call it a transition i know mark mills who's speaking tomorrow he calls it a expansion and okay. One of the things that we want to make sure is that that expansion is done in a sustainable way that helps the people and the communities that we're expanding into, right? And so I'll give you an example. Company I just left, Talent Energy, right? We did we did a direct connect to nuclear power up in a up in a rural, more rural part of Pennsylvania. We've drastically we've introduced we brought Amazon into that community, right? It's it's going to change that entire area. And I, I just absolutely love showing up and seeing the buzz in that community. And I think that we can do this throughout the rest of the United States. This industry can make enormous changes like where we have run out of power in a most of the traditional markets. And so what we're doing now is we're transitioning. So we're tr we are transitioning away from traditional markets to markets that we would not have considered. Right. Right. And those communities are sometimes places that... Uh, feel like they've been lost from that digital convergence that we've seen over the past few years. And it's amazing to go back in these like amazing places with tremendous renewable power, you know, wind and solar. And right, we, we build out all this wind and solar, but sometimes there's problems getting it to market. And so because there, because there's not enough capacity to get it to market, there's we sit here and we say, well, what are we going to do? How do we continue during the, down that sustainability journey? The solution is to bring the digital infrastructure to those places, help those communities, really help us meet those sustainability goals that we're looking for. It's like stranded power, right? That's exactly we're right. We're finding uh, places with the stranded power and we're actually putting them on the map, it's, especially it's, when it comes to AI. So now they could be like an AI hub in certain locations that you would have never heard of before. Yeah, the, the um, iMason's uh, industry report that came out last year talked about these clean energy zones, right? right? Where we're going to be using all types of transitioning fuels, right? Nuclear, so maybe gas with carbon capture, tons of renewables around it, in, you know, further away from our traditional population right. centers. But j just absolutely amazing to help to, to help think through that. And that's what iMason's sustainability um, accord is doing is we are, instead of, at iMason's we have, people joining at the climate accord we have companies coming in trying to solve these problems together and i think that these are just enormous things that we're trying to to, to solve and to do it as companies and as people it's amazing to be part of it is it's absolutely amazing and uh, miranda you're spearheading a lot of that especially some of these ambitious goals uh, that the i mason's climate accord has put forth Right. And some of those milestones along the way of this road to net zero. So why don't you chime in and tell us some of those ambitious goals and the milestones along that road? Well, I, I would say it's a com 
combination of <laughs> ambitious goals. I mean, Michael outlined a few of them, especially when it comes to low carbon solutions, when you're looking at the power conversation. The other ones are really marrying up these titans of industry. And I do say that in the vein of Google, AWS, Meta, Microsoft, they all sit on the governing body. They were there at the inception of the climate accord. They all have their own company targets. And yet, those of you who were here at Yada yesterday saw they were on a stage together right. talking about them in collaborative efforts. They are looking at things. Yes, there is a value when we're talking and looking at something like an environmental product declaration, the EPD, the third party verified data. They are talking about solutions together when it comes to green concrete, when it comes to how we're calculating and reporting on these issues, when we're looking at actual regulatory criteria. How do we inform our regulators of what is going on and ensure that the market is being the voice there? And that is really the ultimate goal, I think, both on the iMason side and the Climate Accord side, is that the voice of the industry really needs to come from, as, as Michael put it really nicely, both the people who are involved in the experts and the organizations right. that are there. And we are now at a point where we're almost 300 companies deep in the Climate Accord. We are looking at very exciting new initiatives for next year, including sub-working groups that get into the real nitty-gritty of these issues. We are looking at things like making sure there's continuing education units so that those folks who are not in the industry can get engaged. I mean, our Jason curriculum learning that Courtney Pop, I believe, spoke with people about at Austin when we were in Data Cloud, that just won an award. And that's not from data center providers. That is from the education community as a whole. And that is a platform with 6 million students on that. K through 12 and onward. So, I mean, we are now really messaging to people that are both experienced and really new to what we're doing. And to me, that helps an ambitious goal. Now you've got this sort of enormous team behind you. You've got people that are excited about this. They're engaged. Mike, you look like you're ready to say something too. <laughs> no, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm listening because it is. It's, it's fantastic. I heard somebody say yesterday that sustainability is a marathon. It's not. There's not a finish line. And I think that when we talk about goals, right, it's it's important to remember that that everybody's at a different place along this journey, along this yeah. journey. And so what what we've been working on with the Power Working Group is putting together a maturity model. It's going to be coming out next year, and it is going to help walk different companies at different stages to get to these more ambitious goals. And um, yeah, and they're evolving, right? So they're always. always changing, evolving. And like you said, there is no finish line. This is an ongoing commitment. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it's a it continuous improvement cycle. The goal with the maturity model, too, is there are various tiers. Hey, are you sort of starting at a place? Where are you on that journey? And we will continue to look at it to ensure that the voices of the Climate Accord, as well as the larger industry, are updating that or adjusting. Maybe it was a little too stringent and no one can meet it. That puts people in a wrong headspace as well to get to those places. Additionally, and again, we spoke about this yesterday on the panel, the governing body has reissued new objectives of the Climate Accord. The first one being that you have a strategy in place, whatever that strategy looks like, to kind of roadmap your way into a carbon reduction or a net zero carbon place. The second is to look at how you're purchasing. Who are the companies you are now involved with? Are they like-minded? Do you need to help with training, et cetera? And then, of course, the sales, whether it's your customers or a product, that that entire environment is coming out and being part of the solutions. It's a whole ecosystem, right? It is. And when it comes to the titans of the industry that you mentioned yesterday, gathering on that stage and talking about it, it's almost like competition, right? So we're all here. Frenemies, I think is what <laughs> right. they call it. And yes, and Schneider was up there. Right. Digital Realty is on the governing body. Obviously, through the working groups, we've got like 35% of the companies. Our, our target next year is to have over 50% of the companies involved in some level of this so that we hear from colos, we hear from providers, we hear from the AC community, architects, engineers, contractors, power providers. I mean, students. Uh, we have other like-minded partnerships with SEBA, the Clean Energy Buyers Alliance. Open Compute will be at next week. All of these are the voices that change this. And there's no way we're going to make progress and get through this sprint to the marathon and continue running if we don't all come together. And that's the one thing that the Climate Accord is doing, bringing everyone Thank you, together. Buffy. We think so. Yeah. And we <laughs> hope if you're watching and you haven't joined us, um, please join us because hopefully you also see we have a lot of fun doing this. It is really hard work. Um, there's a lot going on. We like doing it together. I mean, that's really kind of where it gets through. So when we have sticky conversations, 
Yeah. All right. It's sticky. And then right. keep going. Keep going. Right. Because it's going to be a long, ongoing uh, marathon. So there's obviously urgency with achieving sustainability goals. And we talked about some of those challenges uh, that organizations are facing. But how does the iMasons Climate Accord support some of these barriers and help organizations break through? I know you talked a little bit about it, but why don't we dive into some of that a little bit more? Sure, I'll start. So I think it's like, all right, let's define what the problem what the problem is or what we're trying to achieve is. Dean said it yesterday is the industry has basically almost doubled last year. We added 41 gigawatts of power. That's, that's inc- so just to put it in perspective for the audience, Texas uses about 70 gigawatts we added globally 41 gigawatts. That's there's like almost a whole t- Texas of digital infrastructure. We're gonna we're gonna at least do three times that in the next five years. Just unbelievable amount of challenges. And I think that one of, I kind of touched on it before is that us as a community can think and work together much faster than us as individuals. And I think that that is just right. Us we're we're potentially moving backwards on our carbon, right? Because of the because of how fast we're we're moving. And what I, I get concerned about is that if we move, if we all work individually, we're not going to get there. And so it's very important that as a group, we we collectively try to solve these goals. Mm-hmm. A little bit of a controversial question. So how about some of the you know statements that came out from the uh, former Google CEO? Are you familiar with that? Yes, I am. <laughs> any, any, any comment on that? or, or first, Sure. Yeah, let me frame um, it out. So his comments are basically saying that we should forget about sustainability in a way because we're never going to get there. We should just continue you know, building AI data centers. But any thoughts on that? I mean, we are going to get there, right? And that's everything that we're doing. But I'm just curious to hear your thoughts because it's a big you know, controversy within this show. I yeah, I think this might it. come up. So, all right, let me. Like, thanks for picking me. Yeah. So, I think that let me let me start at the end of his statement. Will AI help solve climate change or help solve sustainability? Yes, I think that it will. So that is that's a good place to end up, right? What I think is maybe missing a little bit is that there is so there's this there's this belief that we have. We're, we're, there's a shortage of power. It's like, well, there's a shortage of power for 5% of the year, right? There, the U.S. has an abundant amount of power. We have an abundant amount of renewable generation that is, as we were talking about before, trapped, right? I think that we can achieve a lot of these goals of what we need for AI just by rethinking the architecture of how we build digital infrastructure. And that I, I just, I guess I somewhat disagree in that I think sustainability actually can help push it forward. So yeah. give you an example, right? Is that renewables can help lower power prices, right? If we continue to bring load towards renewables, we get cheaper power, more abundant, and we can get more abundant power and we need as much capacity as possible. So I really think that it can be part of the solution. It doesn't have to be, you know, throw it away, right? I agree with you. (laughs) I agree with you. Obviously, we're uh, Greener Data and uh, we have our movement as well as our partnership here with Climate Accord and and you, Michael. So I agree with you. I just was curious to see your thoughts there. And having one more question, do you think that it'll slow down Uh, the the demand for the power? Will um, it slow down or will it just continue to grow? uh, What are your predictions there? Five years from now, what type of conversations will we be having? It, it, when it feels comes to right. AI, and the, uh, this is not my expertise, but it seems like AI will help build more and more jobs. Right back to the people. It's not going to lessen jobs. It's actually going to create new jobs that we've never thought about before. It's going to create more apps that we've never thought about before. And so that power demand is going to continue to grow at the the rate of change, the incremental amount year over year. I, I, I don't know, but I think that there will be a need for additional power as we continue to progress. In addition to the emerging markets coming online. I mean, uh, we are talking so about true. this with, a, you know, much more of a North American and a European lens. Right. Oftentimes, because these are the more mature markets, we are starting to see more and more expansion when we're talking about Brazil and how many data centers are coming on there. Africa, Africa Data Centers is one of our partners. Association is one of our partners. I mean, when we see that changing, then we know that that demand is going to continue. 
Do I think things will shift a little bit? Likely. So it may not be the sources and or the application uses that we're seeing today. Uh, I think it'll balance out. But I guess back to that controversial comment, if we don't resolve some of the climate change things going on and the resiliency that we need in these facilities, we're witnessing it right now again in the southeast of the U.S. I mean, Florida is losing power. They're about to get hit with another big storm. That alone could derail any number of things going on. So to not take this into account and kick that can down the road, to me, not the answer. We've got to start doing this stuff now, even if it is baby steps or even if it is sort of things that maybe change out in the future. It, it's not an option for us to yeah. leave it off the table. I agree with you 100%. It is not an option to leave it off the table. Viewers, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode here in Las Vegas for Yoda 2024. And stay curious, stay connected, and happy networking.